So friends, so much love to share, so much Torah in the air. This week we've taken on some really heavy topics. We had the delight of sharing a moment, a long moment of Torah with our friend, our teacher, uh, uh, Father Kevin Weidinger. Um, we discussed the opening three sections of the Torah portion of Kitetze that deals with incredible, um, horrific realities. We've looked at a lot of Torah this week. So I, in that spirit, I wasn't really sure what to do because I wanted to give us a light way into Shabbat. But this is a very powerful and complicated Parsha. And I want to have a lot of integrity looking at it. I want us to work on, um, work on ourselves, work on our community. And so let's look at the, the part of the Parsha that continues the theme. Not light, but really important. Here's the setting. Parsha Kitetse includes the rules for capital punishment. What do you do when someone is accused of a capital crime and is committed to death? Now, before I continue the thought, you should know that that's the biblical setting, but the rabbis, generations later, 2,000 years ago, asked the question or impl implicitly posed uh, a value, which is to say, if one rabbinic court committed one person to death every 70 years, it was considered a murderous court in their own eyes. So much of the justice system in Jewish tradition is to avoid finding someone uh, culpable of the death penalty. So even though there is a lot of talk in the Torah and in rabbinic literature, especially in Masechet Sanhedrin, for those who are curious, about the death penalty itself, this Parsha has a hint that leads to the rabbinic um, reticence, the moral judgment, actually, on the death penalty. And so we always have debates. You know, you ever see big debates in Jewish tradition, and we talk about the hot-button issues in society. Well, that typically includes the death penalty. You should know that the overwhelming Jewish tradition is that death is not ours to meet out, uh, and that that is God's to meet out. One of the places that you can see the Torah's notion of even someone who's guilty and the dignity that they deserve, the, vi the, the divinity that their image represents, <clears throat> is that when someone is found guilty of a capital offense and is um, judged and sentenced to death, they are, um, and again, this is stuff in the ancient world that I could reframe and talk about how this isn't how we see humanity or bodies or when someone was sentenced to death, um, they were executed and they were suspended, um, let's say on gallows or, and immediately taken down. So in fact, that's the biblical text. When someone is to that extent found guilty and then sentenced to death, um, their body was displayed and then taken down immediately. And the rabbis in the Talmud have a question, earlier and later than the Talmud, but specifically the Talmud. They pose the question, if the goal of this sentence was to deter other people from committing such a terrible act, why would you display the body of the criminal found uh, guilty? Why would you display it and then take it down? Would you display it and leave it up for people to see? And you can think of horrible scenes from intense movies and TV shows of someone whose body is left to show the power of the authority and the guilt of the judged. Um, certainly the Romans did this a lot. Um, comes the rabbis and they tell us a very different lesson about what justice represents and what to be a human represents too. It is an indignity to God to have the image of God displayed in such a way, say the rabbis. And what a powerful thing it is to see the rabbis in the ancient world reflecting on the dignity of a human body. I'm sure I don't have to point to any specific images that may have emerged into our world during this last week. 
people who are accused of crimes, people who are, you know, presumed innocent until proven guilty. But those are complicated images, images of God, refracted through very human personalities, embodied and therefore potentially implicated or guilty of crimes. But all the same, we should take no joy when a human face or body is demonstrated as connected to guilt or found guilty. That's a moment where we all suffer because the image of God is something that unites us all. It's very complicated to channel God's divinity through life. That's why we have so many mitzvot. That's why we have so many commandments. That's why we have community. That's why we have each other, to hold each other to the standards that we believe we should be held to. And when we fail, we need to be held accountable. But while being held accountable, we're not supposed to think that we are anything less than divine. During this period of time, Elul, the month leading to Rosh Hashanah, we are actually given the chance over and over again to do better, which means we know we didn't do our best or doing our best wasn't really our best. Here we are with a chance to do better again, but the only way we do that is holding ourselves accountable. And when we hold ourselves accountable, sometimes we recognize that acts that we have committed require consequences. But the big lesson I hope to share today is that being held to consequences in no way erases the divine image that we carry. One of the reasons we are held to such a standard, perhaps the reason we are held to such a standard, is because we carry God's image through our lives. And so may we be held accountable. May we hold ourselves accountable. May we be blessed with a new year to do even better, to reach higher than we did before. As we will say, once Rosh Hashanah comes during the Kaddish, we shift just a little bit. We say, La'ela ula'ela, higher and higher. May we be blessed, friends, to reach higher and higher. And may we never see another human being as any less worthy of divine treatment. May we be careful about the way we hold humans accountable. May we remember that there's something that unites all of us. May we find each other. May we find our shared humanity more and more and more. May we never be casual about what it is to be, cre to be created in God's image. All right, friends, let's sing our way into a beautiful Shabbat. Ya la 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 Diddy I la 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 Diddy I la 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 I la 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 Bless you friends. Have a good Shabbos. See you soon.